Welcome back to Super Bowl Live, and I've got Michael Robinson, Scott Pioli once again joining me, and sitting next to Michael Robinson is a Pro Football Hall of Famer. Warren Moon is in the house. Great to have you with us here, Warren. A 17-year NFL career. Now, you finished your career as a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. You even started a game for them, right? I at did. Age, age 44. Is there a little Chiefs kingdom still left in you as you assess this matchup between KC and San Francisco? Yeah, you know, everywhere I played, that, that blood is still in me, and uh, the Chiefs are no different. Uh, that was a great community for me to live in. You know, I got a chance to meet Patrick Mahomes when he was coming out of college. We were represented by the same guy in Lee Steinberg. So I followed his career at, tech, at uh, Texas Tech, know a lot about his talent level, and uh, he has really come into the league and kind of harnessed all that and become one of the best football players there is. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of Chiefs still in me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Warren, this is Scott Pioli. Thanks so much for joining us. I mean, uh, treasure having you here with us. You know, in 1989, you were the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award winner. And Patrick Mahomes is up that for that award. You just mentioned your relationship and how you've gotten to know him. What is it about Patrick, just beyond the football player, that makes him so special and possibly worthy of winning this award? Well, first of all, he's very humble, uh, and that was the thing I noticed about him when I first met him, how humble he was, how polite he was. Uh, you could tell he came out of a sports background in his family. Uh, you know, I've met his mom and dad. Um, so, you know, all those things are, 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 you know, solid rocks about who he is. And then you look at the, the football player and, and the physical attributes. Uh, those things are just off the charts. But he's also a leader. He's very vocal. Uh, he can be vocal to a point to where you might think he's being uh, irritating, but he backs it up. He backs it up with his play. And when and when you can back it up with your play like that, you can say whatever you want, and your players will respond. And, and he does that week in and week out. Now, Warren, I, I was at opening night, man, and I was around the Kansas City Chiefs, and it just seemed like everything went through Patrick, even where the guys lined up. You know, even Andrew <laughs> Reed was like, ask Patrick, I don't know. Um, and he's only 28. Yeah. Uh, like, is, is he already the greatest ever at that, you know, at that position? I know you've played it, Hall of Famer, all of that. But this kid is on a whole nother level right now. He is on a um, he is on a run. I don't I don't say he's the best ever yet because he's only what seven years in the league or something like that. But he is definitely on his way. And if he wins another one this week, that's three in his first what seven years or something like that. Um, but Tom Brady still has yeah. seven, <laughs> seven. But but you know what? The trajectory says at some point he could probably be that guy. Well, Warren, you know, the, the two quarterbacks in this matchup certainly have different paths. Patrick Mahomes, first-round pick. Chiefs traded all the way up to go get him, while Purdy, as is well-documented, final pick uh, in the 2022 draft. You had a unique path as well to the league, starting your career in the CFL. Do you have a special appreciation <laughs> for what Brock Purdy uh, has done <laughs> at this point? Yeah, I really do, and uh, I love for people to tell other people what they can't do, you know? <laughs> and I was told that I couldn't play quarterback for uh, different reasons. Um, some people thought I wasn't good enough to play quarterback. Some people had, had it to do with the color of my skin. But Brock Purdy, it's not like nobody told him he couldn't play it, but he definitely wasn't a high-round draft pick. He did get drafted. I wasn't going to even be drafted as a quarterback. But uh, what he's done as a seventh-round draft pick is come in there and show what he could do and he's, and he's showing it week in and week out, not only last year taking his team to the NFC Championship, but also this year taking his team to a Super Bowl. And I'm so tired of hearing all this uh, stuff about him being a, a manager. You know, every quarterback mm. is a manager. manager. Yeah. <laughs> every quarterback is asked to manage the game plan that you put in every week on Monday, Tuesday, and go through the blitz protections, go through the uh, the pass routes you're putting in, all the different things that go along with, with uh, playing the position. No matter what offense you're in, you're asked to manage that. Yeah. So, but the ones that are special are the ones that can make those, when the, man, when the, when the uh, play breaks down, can you still make a play happen? Can you make a positive play or can you make an amazing play? And that's what 
Patrick Mahomes can do. That's what Josh Allen can do. That's what Lamar Jackson can do. That's what makes those guys elite because they can take a play that's broken down and make it into something positive. And, and we've seen Brock Purdy do that the last two weeks. We've seen him bring his team from behind in two playoff games, and we've seen him do it with his legs and with his arms. So I'm tired of people talking about this kid. And he doesn't have to win a Super Bowl in order to show that he's a good quarterback in this league. Warren, I've got to ask you another question. We just and you just talked about Brock Purdy and him being the last man in the draft one year. And I mean, heck, back in 1978, you weren't even drafted. And I know you don't like to talk about you, but I'm going to drag you into this and talk about it because I think your story is so unique. You know, the, the, the fact that you weren't drafted, you had the CFL, but then you go on to make the NFL Hall of Fame or the Pro Football Hall of Fame because again, you had a pro career in the NFL, but in another league as well. You know, Warren. Talk about the chip on the shoulder. There's so many. You know, I was with Tom Brady. We drafted him in the sixth round. Brock Purdy in the seventh round. Tell us what it takes emotionally and mentally to go from a spot like that and to bring yourself to the highest levels of this game. Well, you know, from my upbringing, you know, from my mom, I, I had a tremendous amount of pride and I had a tremendous amount of determination and because that's what she had in taking care of our family. Um, when my dad passed away when I was seven, mm -hmm. I had six sisters and it was just me, the only boy. So I, I took on a, a, a man role in my house at a very young age. But I saw how my mother didn't quit and she just kept fighting and, and kept making a way for us. So every time I went through a tough situation, I just looked at her situation and said, if she could do it, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to do it. It. And, and part of my motivation was to take care of her one day the way she sacrificed and took care of me. So that's where a lot of it comes from. And I didn't have a chip on my shoulder. I had a boulder up there. Uh. I had a. I used to carry a <laughs> boulder around until um, I could prove to people that I could play this position. And my and my theory was or my philosophy was, I'm not going to hang my head because somebody tells me no because of whatever reason it is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working my tail off, and when somebody does give me an opportunity, I'm going to be ready. And that's what I did every step of the way, every level that I went to where they told me no, I just kept working to, be, to become better. I love it, man. Man, you got you inspire me right now to go throw a football around. Well, I know you threw it a lot when you were in college, too, man. Yeah, I used to, and yeah. I had to switch positions, too. Some of those same issues. Thank you. Later, Thank you. Know you. I know your story. I know your story. It's all good. Now, this past year, the, the, the Tennessee Titans, they wore the old Houston Oilers jerseys <laughs> against Houston. Tell us your thoughts about that, man. Did you feel a certain type of way those jerseys coming back out? Well, you know, all of my history is with the Tennessee Titans now, you know, my my number is retired there. My records are there. Uh, Amy Adams Strunk is the owner, and she her dad was the owner when I was with the with the Oilers. Uh, Bud Adams, so. I have a special affection for her, especially the way she's brought in all of us former Oilers players um, to have a home. Because there's a lot of players. I played at other teams, but there's players that only played for the Oilers that had no history, oh nowhere to go on, on reunion weekends and things like that. So she's brought mm -hmm. us all in and made us all family. She kept the rights to the Oilers uniforms. So if she has the rights, she uses them the way she wants to use them, where the, mm -hmm. the, the Houston Texans, they had a chance to get those rights, but they wanted to create the tech. They, they wanted to create themselves, which I understand them for doing that. They wanted their identity in the in the uh, in the community. But now it's 26 years later. The uh, uniforms are worn, and they're worn by the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> Well, Warren, uh, we certainly appreciate what you've done, uh, you know, for the NFL and your story is such a big piece of this game. And we see you, you know, with us here on behalf of the NFL Alumni Association. Uh, what kind of impact uh, has the Alumni Association had, you know, from your perspective and how it continues to grow? Well, you know, the NFL really encourages you to get involved in your community when you're a player. And that doesn't stop just because you retire. Uh, now that we're retired, we have a, a lot more knowledge. We probably have a lot more uh, success as far as what we can share with other young people. So myself and probably another 200 guys around the, around the, uh, the league in different league cities, we, we're getting involved in a lot of different programs that the NFL alumni has, and one of them being that we launched today is called the Better Business, uh, the BBB, Better Business Bureau Heart of uh, Texas Foundation. And what we do is we take the same lessons that we learned in football, the, you know, the hard work, the work ethic, the sportsmanship, teamwork, all those different things, and try and incorporate it into young people in the communities to uh, 
teach them how to be successful business leaders of tomorrow. Um, so a lot of the, the things that we learned as football players turn us into good business people, and uh, that's what I did. I, I, I was in broadcasting for 15 years. I also had my own marketing company for 11 years. I have a foundation that I run. And I, all those things I learned from those lessons that I learned in sports. So that's what the uh, NFL alumni is trying to do with young people in all these different communities is teach them the lessons that we learned so they can be successful in whatever it is they want to do. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Warren, pleasure getting a chance to get your insights. Thank you very much uh, for joining us.